I just love that what I'm photographing is actually, it's not just a representation of the, the sun and the landscape. It's, it's coming through the camera and, and, and an active participant uh, coming in and, and, and physically acting on the surface of the, of the medium. And um, made a 717 camera myself for about 150 bucks using like hacksaw blades as the spring steel. You know, it was pretty hokey, but it worked. And then it was very liberating. Um, I knew I could take it anywhere, and if it broke, I knew I could fix it. And um, it really loosened up my uh, photographic work. Uh, and then just once, once that happened, then I made another camera when I went to Ireland. And, uh, and then once, we got, once I got into this work, um, I started using optics that were from aerial reconnaissance cameras from like World War II era, Korean War era, that were really heavy, some of them as much as 30 pounds. And uh, most view cameras can't really handle that, so I had to use the uh, skateboard ramps, junior high woodshop skills, and uh, they aren't pretty. It's not like I'm using um, kiln dried mahogany and you know brass and leather bellows it's pretty it's plywood and <laughs> aluminum and pretty much thrown together but it's functional and that's all that matters so in 2003 in Utah uh, I just happened to have uh, pointed the camera east with the aperture wide open to get as many stars as in this possible focus at infinity and um, I woke up. I woke up around nine or ten <laughs> the next morning, and I just woke up going, "Well, didn't get that shot." Didn't really think too much about it until I went to go close the shutter and um, smell of smoke <laughs> was kind of coming out, and I didn't even think anything too much of that. Uh, and close the shutter, put the dark slide back in, and sh uh, took photographs the rest of the day. And then that evening I was changing film and this one sheet had a tear in it. And I was, I'm like, how did I do, how does that happen? And then the light bulb, oh, that's right, the sun. And I almost threw it away, but uh, I was curious. It's been great, it, I, I love it. Um, I love that I have to um, use a solar panel and a computer fan to exhaust smoke out of my bellows of my camera. It's a very primal, uh, it's, so, it's so basic, it's just lens and paper and time. Uh, but there's these weird aspects that you, just ha you wouldn't have thought you would ever have to deal with. This piece was made in my favorite spot to shoot, uh, a view of the Pacific Ocean. It's like classic horizon line, Sugimoto style, <laughs> with a little twist to it. Um, but I just love the simplicity of, of that horizon line. It's, it's interesting, there's a lot of people doing uh, some really creative work uh, using photographic medium, but in a completely non-traditional way. And um, I don't know, I, I'm, I'm starting to wonder if it has something to do with a uh, reaction to the digital process. The idea of an instant moment is just shattered uh, when you have to spend 24 hours making one piece and, and documenting, uh, you aren't just documenting the sun, you're documenting wind and clouds and tidal uh, flows. It, and it, it's, there's much more being documented than it appears. I, I mean, I do get that. So you're still doing those burn things, but you know, what are you gonna do? I just say, yeah, <laughs> I am.